Hi everyone and welcome back and this week we're going to look at a cheaper option for resin printing. Right, so when you buy a resin printer I've got the Anycubic Photon, highly recommend that. For the price it's a great little printer. It comes with 250ml resin. Well, to be honest, I probably did waste a chunk of this when I turned it to jelly when it got caught by the sunlight. Not great. And the downside is, it's quite expensive. So this is only 250ml. A litre will cost you getting on to about £80 in the UK. Ouch. It does go a reasonable way, but it's still not cheap. So, I thought, I order other stuff from a company called Technology out there. I use my cheaper FDM filaments from there. And they've always been very good. And then offer on some resin. Oh, let's have a look. So the first thing I'm going to check, it states on the bottle here, the light frequency. And it matched. Well, that was a good start. So do I buy 250ml? Well, 250ml is a little bit pricey. Not, or do I take my chances and go for it? So, I bought a litre. That litre there was just over £50. But also on the bottom here is a code for if you order again, you get 10% off. Win-win. So, let's have a look. What do I notice about the resins first? When I poured this one into the vat, it's thinner. It's less thick jelly. So let's go and have a look at the vat. Right, so here we have the Anycubic Photon. I did FDM print a lid to go over the vat. It does recommend leaving resin in the vat. That is a pain to filter it out. The only problem with this is you need two hands to take it off. So let's give it a wiggle. It does come, it's a tight fit though. Oh, there we go. Right. So pop that out the way. Before you print anything, you're going to want to mix the resin up. So this resin's actually been sat in here for probably a week. As you can see, with a little mix, it comes together nicely. And there's no lumps on the bottom of the FDM screen, at the bottom here, this film. Which with the official resin, I found I was getting a build up. It could be a bit of a nightmare to clean off. So there you go, that's had a good mix. Let that run off. As you can see the way it runs, it's actually thinner. Let's give this a tap. Grab the cloth. Let that off. And shut the lid. So shut the lid. Turn it on. And wait for it to realise. I'll go print. Right, now I have the file. I'll select it. And we'll hit play. So the printer lower itself down. Takes a little while to get there, unfortunately. It's nearly there. It lays itself into the vat, and then. It exposes the first layer. First layer takes a little bit longer than the rest. I'm going to show a picture of what it's printed. So it's really confusing because you're actually looking at the slices. And once that one's exposed. Which I think it's about 50 seconds for the first layer. 
don't panic, not every layer takes 50 seconds. Just the first one to get a good stick onto the build plate. So we we'll just sit here, twiddle our thumbs. It's trouble with printers, I've got a habit of making you look at them. So eventually, it'll beep at you. Come on, you can do it. Do, 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 do. And there it goes, up it goes. And down it goes again. And so there you go, it's off and running. Right, so that's the printer running, but in good old British blue piece of fashion. Here's one I printed earlier. So there you go, that's with all the supports on. So the details come out really well. So we picked up the struts and the guitar at the back. So this is a nice tiefling bar done by Walter Ring Studios. I did reason I'm printing another one. Well, I had one that I did. I imprimed it. And then I think it ran into interference. I don't know if it's the kids, the cats. I don't know who to blame. But the dragon's lost its wings. So I'm printing another one. As you can see, the detail comes out really well. That could have done with clean up a little bit more on the um, supports. You do have a lot of supports with resin printing. Biggest trick with it, UV bump it, sorry clean it, UV bump it, chuck it to one side for a few days. Just let it really hard up a little bit more. So when you snap the supports off, instead of trying to cut them against the model, you come in and you cut them lower down somewhere about here and just grab it bend it and they snap almost clean. When I first got the print out I was a little bit concerned because the grey resin was a little bit softer to feel than the any cubic official resin but it has set perfectly well just giving it that little bit of extra time. Even with using ultraviolet light etc it's nice to just put them to the side and let them harden up naturally. And Here's one my like, ten year old son designed on Tabletop Heroes, I think, on the web page. And he's turned out absolutely great as well. So that's my verdict. Will I be spending £80 on the official stuff? Or 50 quid? Mine's my 10% um, discount for the next one. On the non-official. Well, I think that's a non-brainer really, isn't it? I think I'll be sticking with what I found is actually even a better product at a lower price. Downside with resins, you're restricted almost to the country you're in to find a supplier due to shipping regulations. So Technology Outlet is UK based, but I'm sure there's plenty of others out there in Canada, America, etc. Just make sure you get the right light frequency rating on it and give it a go if I were you. If you found any you like please stick it down in the comments below so people can have a dig through and see what they found. It'd be nice to have a little list for all the other people in different areas. It's just a shame you can't ship this stuff all over the world. But then again, shipping to America, that would be double the price by the time it got there. Unfortunately. Well hopefully this video was useful to you. Um, please give it a thumbs up, please consider becoming a subscriber to keep up to date with what I'm working on. As you can hear out here, I've got quite a lot being worked on at the moment. I've got one printer over there going, the one I call R2D2, the Flash Forge, which seems to be the noisiest printer I've ever come across. Even with the sound turned off, it likes to make its presence known. The Photon's working down there in the corner. The only one that's having a day off at the moment is the Ender 3, but that's in the front room. Well, thank you for joining me, have a great week gaming, and I'll see you soon.